The Daily. Dave Hodgson. Hey, Dave. T-R-E. Welcome back to the show. I'm delighted now. We're going to be heading to Scotland. Yes, you heard it right. And we're talking about tea making in Scotland. Uh, good afternoon. How are you, Derek Walker? I'm very well, Dave. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you very much. Now, I, you know, I've heard of Iron Brew from Guntas, but I didn't know anything about tea making in Scotland. So how did that all come about then? Well, it's quite interesting, really. A friend and I, we were getting more and more frustrated about the fantastic coffee that was offer, on offer, and uh, we just couldn't seem to get a great cup of tea anywhere. <laughs> I, I don't know how things are in Spain for yes. you, the, uh, to be able to get yourself a proper brew, um, but I guess out of frustration, we decided to open up a tea shop at first. We learned a lot in the process of doing that, and we decided to stick with our guns and just sell loose-leaf tea. And uh, I guess things have moved on from there about a year ago, uh, we decided to set up a plantation, and so we now have a very large plantation right here in Scotland, in Perthshire. So do you feel that there's a, a tea renaissance going on? Because I was back in the UK last week, and uh, you know, I enjoyed a, a good cup of tea. Uh, but uh, here in Spain, of course, it's more coffee as you go around the, uh, uh, the cafes and so on. Uh, so do you feel that tea is coming back on the agenda after coffee dominating for a while? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Even in America, there are tea shops opening up in Manhattan. Um, one of the, you know, Starbucks has just opened up a tea shop in, uh, in the States. Uh, there's a whole lot of big movement in the UK for tea shops. A lot of the German coffee houses becoming tea houses. There's absolutely a, a demand for a really pr a good proper cuppa. Brilliant, Lo lovely. Uh, and so when we think of tea making places, obviously we, we think of India and China and, and uh, uh, you know, those kind of countries. So you must get some strange looks from you say to somebody, maybe at a party, what do you do? Well, we're tea makers in Scotland. <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely <laughs> right. Everybody gets quite excited about it and thinking, how on earth can you grow tea in Scotland? But we simply, I mean, in the simplest way, we look after the plants. The, the plants are well cared for and uh, we, we, we use different technology to be able to make sure that they're protected in our, in our climate. So whereabouts in Scotland are you then, if you give us an idea? Well, we're in Perthshire, yeah. not too far from Dunkeld, and the plantation itself sits in, in, a, in a field called Dalriach, which is the field of the king, mm. I think named after uh, Robert the Bruce, actually, King Robert the Bruce. And uh, just above the plantation is a beautiful highland spring, a natural highland spring, and the water flows down from the highland spring and, and just flows down past the plantation itself. So it's a beautiful setting to grow really lovely tea. It sounds really idyllic. Uh, what about, I mean... I know it's probably a bit of a shock to you, but Scotland is cold, isn't it, from time to time? So. Yeah. Do you know, not today, though. <laughs> no, it's actually lovely here today for a, for a change. If you'd called, if we'd been speaking a couple of days ago, we'd be discussing how cold it was for sure. Um, but, yeah, we, we, we certainly do four seasons here, don't we? Um, so do you, I mean, do you have to fight the frost and snow and so on? How's that go? Yeah, yeah. Um, basically, we use a degradable polymer, uh, almost like a degradable uh, natural plastic, which can, can sit on top of the soil. And what happens with that, if you imagine putting a sheet of, um, a sheet of plastic on, on top of the soil, the moisture stays below that, and it helps to trap the, the heat as well, so you can create a really nice humid conditions on the top of the soil, which protects the root of the plant itself and helps it to grow well. And above that, we can, we can cover the plants, but we do leave the plants above that, because they're, they're kind of fooled into thinking that the climate's much better than it actually is. Uh, so, I mean, do you uh, do you make some of these what I call trendy teas? Um, uh, because you know, my wife likes some of these trendy teas, but you know, uh, I just like a nice cup of tea with milk in it. You know, I'm a bit old fashioned. So yeah, I, I think I think you can kind of get hooked on it because I, I I was a bit of a tea novice a couple of years ago, and the, um, I, I'm starting to appreciate tea more and more for how delicate tea, tea flavors can be. I mean, back back in the days when I would be first drinking tea, my granny would you know have a a, a pot of quite black, rich black mixture of a Scottish breakfast tea sitting on the cooker all day long. <laughs> uh, and that was my introduction. But nowadays, I, I love a, a, a beautiful cup of white tea or, or even green tea, minty green tea. Mm. And, and it would even push myself so far as to have a, a, a cup of rooibos, which is not actually from the same plant, not from the Camellia sinensis plant, but from, from a bush in South Africa. And rooibos has got incredible properties. It's full of vitamin C, uh, naturally caffeine-free, um, it's, it's a really, really healthy option as a, as a hot drink. Uh, we blend ours with, with vanilla, actually, so we have a really yeah. awesome vanilla tea, which is just absolutely beautiful. And how much tea are you actually producing there at the moment? I mean, are you... Uh, is China worried? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> it should they be worried. I, I, I don't think they should 
worry, yeah. The, uh, we, we have, uh, at the moment, about a four-acre spread of our, of our, in our plantation, and we're, we're looking to take our plants from about 4,000 to 6,000 quite quickly. Wow. Um, and so it is quite a big space, but the amount of tea that comes from that is negligible at the moment because we've, we've just had our first harvest, our, our first crop, or I feel like our flush, first flush in, um, on Valentine's Day this year. Mm. And that tea has been extremely sought after. Um, we, we, there, there's not a lot of it. The, um, and it's sitting with some, you know, quite influential buyers just now, and so we're waiting to hear back from them on, you know, and what their opinions are. So far, the, the feedback's been incredible. I've actually tasted it myself, and I, I, I guess it's it's, it's, it's like I, I compare it to possibly a nice Darjeeling, a beautiful champagne colour and a really nice nutty flavour to to the tea itself. But that, and, and we produce that, and manufacture that in in Scotland at the plantation. It sounds great. So you've got uh, bigger companies that are interested, maybe. Uh, once that happens, it, it's what you know. Where it's a snowball effect, I suppose. After that, it's just where does it end? Yeah, well, well, the main thing for us is uh, is encouraging people to drink more tea, just generally, and to to ask for real tea. You know, to ask for a proper brew and not a, a dusty tea bag. A lot of our customers uh, from the wee tea company, we work with local independent cafes and delis throughout the whole of the UK. It'd be nice to get some in Spain, yeah. actually. Um, local independents who well, want to make then, a good, you know. yeah, yeah, it would be great to, to send them stuff because a lot of people are a bit embarrassed, cafe owners are embarrassed by this wonderful coffee offering and a, and a really poor tea offering and we can give them a solution to that. Well we have lots of Scottish here living here and I'm on holiday here and you know, British all over the place and I, yeah, sure. what a great little thing for your cafe to say we sell Scottish tea. Yeah, and I see what you did there with the wee tea company. Oh, there you go. Sells Scottish tea. Yeah. I never even noticed it myself. That's how good it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's certainly, it's certainly becoming more and more popular, and and we're, I, the feedback that we're getting from the cafes is that you know their customers are delighted that they can eventually you know finally go into some place and get well what could be termed a proper cup of tea. I mean, recently I went in and asked for a cup of tea, and I was charged more for more water for a large. You know, I didn't even get an extra tea bag. <laughs> Really, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You don't want to want. You need to. My dad always used to say to me, "Make me a cup of tea and give the tea bag a chance." He always used to say that. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, so, I mean, do you feel this? That you feel like you're pioneering something here? Do you feel that people, will, other companies, will follow in, in your stead? Scotland, yeah, I think so. Yeah, and, and Scotland generally has a great heritage with tea. I mean, some of the you know the tea, the tea clippers that were that were actually. Um, in Scotland for bringing some of the first tea to the UK many, many years ago. But I think there is a revival and I think there is a chance now for people to, you know, to take tea more seriously. And um, I think Scotland is looking with that. In the, in the UK, um, there are very few tea plantations. Certainly, I think we're possibly the largest tea plantation in the UK and we aim to keep growing. Uh, not wanting to get political, but I'm going to ask you the question anyway. What, sure. As a businessman in Scotland, with this growing business, uh, you know, obviously going to be selling to all over the UK and hopefully in Europe as well. Uh, yes. How's that bode with the vote coming in September? Are you feeling that, that could be, if Scotland went independent, that would be negative for business? I don't think so. I think Scotland. Uh, it's a great question, actually. It's a political question. The, um, I guess it, it's difficult to answer that without being personal. No. I think Scotland. Well, I want to be personal. Let's just say this. Let's just say this. Tea brings people together, doesn't it? Yes. You know, it solves every problem. And so maybe if we had a few people sitting around drinking more tea, then the, you know, the, the UK and the politicians would be happier and making better decisions. So let's, let's get David Cameron, Alex Cameron, in the same room. They give a good pot of tea. Exactly. We'll supply the tea yeah. and, and say, "Come on, let's let's do the best for Britain here, you know, and, and the best for Europe and our connections in there. Let's do that." Brilliant. Is there anywhere we can go online just to have a look and maybe, um, you know, there may be somebody out there who's got a, a cafe here in Spain is, is thinking maybe this would be a, just a nice little um, add-on to what we're doing, you know, with uh, having Scottish tea. So I wonder if there's a website they can visit. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's a wee tea company. It's just wee tea company. W e e t e a company dot com. Brilliant. Wee tea company dot com. Right, we're going to play a bit of Bernard Cribbins. I know you said you were listening to the show earlier on, so hopefully this is your sort of music. Bernard Cribbins. I'm and... loving the show. <laughs> and uh, right, so Fred. Uh, so uh, and we all stop for tea, of course. Cheers. Thank you for joining. us. really appreciate it. Get back to your tea now. I'll let you get up and have a nice cuppa. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, cheers. Uh, Derek there, talking about tea in Scotland. Love it. Love it.